Hey everyone, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough on how to run the log4j mitigation script put out by Esri. This script removes the JNDI lookup class. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Esri blog. This is where you're going to stay up to date on the latest developments regarding the log4j vulnerability. So once you get to the blog, you can scroll down and notice that they have some clickable links here. So we have one for ArcGIS server, portal, the data store, geo event, and workflow manager. For this demo, we're going to go ahead and go into server. So about halfway down the page, you're going to find the link to the Python zip file. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to download this, but then we're going to have to check, we'll run a PowerShell script to check and make sure that the hash of that download matches this, this hash. So we can see that we have the correct script. So I have already downloaded this. I, for the purposes of this demo, I created a temp folder. So here is my Python zip file that I'm going to want to check. So we're going to go down in the search window and we're going to type in PowerShell. We're going to want to right click on that and run it as administrator. Say yes. So I have got, I have put all of these commands in a notepad ahead of time just to make things easier. So I'm going to copy this command. So the command is get file hash and then this is just going to be the path to where you put your zip file. Once we put that command in we'll hit enter and now we have the hash number and so what we really want to do here is move this over and compare it to this one. So we can just look at the first few numbers here 31EC, 31EC and then our last numbers 58F3, 58F3. So we can feel confident that we have the correct uh, download. So now this download can be used for portal and data store and geo event. You don't need to download a different script. Um, we've already checked it once so we don't have to do it again. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually run the script and it's got two parts to it. So the first part is going to be, we're going to look through the server folder for the affected files and we're going to list them out. And then we're going to want to take a screenshot of that so just in case anything happens we'll know which folders we went to. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're going to open a command prompt down here at the search, type in cmd, and then right click and we'll run that as administrator. So before we can do that we actually have to get to the directory where we stored the Python file. So to do that, I'm going to go over here. And copy that. We're going to type in cd space, and that is the path to where my Python file exists. I'll hit enter, and then I've changed the directory. So then we're going to want to put in the command for checking those files. Okay, so we'll kind of go over what's in here. So you need the Python executable in order to run the Python script. So when you, in, when you install server or portal, they each come with a set of tools. Uh, each one has Pyth a version of Python in it. So for server, unless you put this, in, unless you designated this in a different place when you installed, generally speaking, it's in program files in this path and there's your Python executable. And you're going to want to put those in quotation marks. And then you'll have a space and then next you're going to just type in the name of the Python script. So this is the variable that will change when we run this the second time. So we're dash dash, we're just listing out the files right now. We just want to see where they are. And this is where it, uh, the script is going to be looking for those files. So now that we have that in there, we can go ahead and click enter. And then we'll wait a second while this starts to list them out. Okay, so it's telling me that it found six files. And so probably the best thing to do would be to take a snip of this. So you want to take a snip of the, the file paths in case something were to happen after you ran it and you needed to revert back for whatever reason. Okay, 
So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to run, want to run that exact same command, but instead of dash dash list, we're going to do dash dash delete. But before we do that, we're going to want to go back down here to our magnifying glass, our search, and put in services. We need to stop that ArcGIS server service. So here is the ArcGIS server service. You can click on it right click and stop that service. Otherwise you will not be able to delete those files. Once that's stopped, you can go back to your command. You can repaste that in or paste it into your notebook and then repaste it in and just make sure it says delete instead of list. It will go through these. It will do what it needs to do. You'll see an all done with an exclamation point and then you can go back to your services, right click and start them again. And so you're gonna do this process um, for each component that you have that is listed here. Now, the tools are in a little bit different spot for each one. So I mentioned that for server, typically, this is the path right here to that Python executable. For portal, it's program files, portal, and then you go to framework, and it's located here. Now, data store does not have um, a Python executable that it can use. So in, in my example, I'm in an all-in-one environment. So for the data store, um, I just went ahead and used the path to servers Python executable. Now, if your data store is on a completely different server that does not have an install of Python, you can just go to python.org under downloads and download Python 3. It cannot be Python 2.7, it has to be Python 3. So download that and then you can go ahead and um, run that script just the way that we've done. So that's all I have for this. Thanks for listening.